are such an asshole. All right, we got a question. I'm going to try and answer this one a little bit more uh, methodically because this keeps coming up and I keep repeating myself with the same answer. Um, and certainly, by all means, if you have a question, search my channel. See if I haven't addressed this issue before. <clears throat> but I'm going to try to have this be the authoritative one where I like, I just go to this one. Or if, I don't know, I want to buy some gas, I'll say, oh, yeah, I'll do the video again. So I'll just take people's money. Why? Because I'm an asshole. Uh, hey, Cappy, just over two years ago, I deleted social media. However, I recently realized that I now have no friends. Well, did you have them anyway? Without re-downloading social media, how, media, how do I go about building quality relationships? Boo, uh, boo, 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 boo. Oh, wait. No, I said, uh, well, we're doing a video response now. Okay, you, you just got upgraded. All right. So I've taken notes this time. All right. uh, let us go through what happens to everybody because this is not a new thing. Now, the, the new curveball as to why, why it's hard to have friends when you get older, uh, that's always been the case. All right? You will always lose the vast majority of your friends. Uh, but the curveball now is with uh, social media and the digital world. And I'd say more recently, mandatory root beer floats. And I would say the uh, the gender war going on uh, as we have it right now. But I'll, I'll get to that later. But <clears throat> before all that new fun stuff came along, it was a uh, <clears throat> general trend or process in life where you would go to school and then over time lose your friends. And where you would say, why is it so hard to make friends? It starts at school. Because school misleads you into overestimating your social life. You think about that K through 12 or, you know, K through college, K through graduate school. You have a group of people your own age <clears throat> forced by law at gunpoint to attend a prison called school. Day in, day out for 13 years. And even if your school was, was smaller, it still was all the kids in your town, in your neighborhood, were forced to go to this one place for better or for worse. And so you were spoiled for choice with all your all these other equally aged, presumably equally roughly within the ballpark of intelligence and maturity. And so that's when your friendships had. Then you go to college, it's the same thing, but there it's even more people. That's probably where your social life uh, really kicks in. <clears throat> and you think this is going to last forever. You think these are, you know, like you know, the best friendships. Yeah, we're back in the year youth. Like, yeah, we're going to do all this. It's going to be great. You, you're, you were growing. You were experiencing. You were, you were maturing together, um, exploring life. And so these things bonded you and formed you. You had a lot of affection and care and camaraderie for your, for your, your friends. <clears throat> then when you leave school, whether that's college or high school or whatever, now real life comes in and pulls everyone away from each other. And sometimes it's for good reasons. Sometimes it's bad. Uh, somebody goes away for a different grad school. Someone goes to work in a different state. Someone joins the military, goes overseas. Um, whatever it is, now you leave this artificial environment called school. And certainly in your 20s, you could go out night clubbing or different social activities or whatever people used to do in the before time because they don't do it now. <clears throat> And largely because everyone was single, usually people stayed in the same area. So your, your social life would continue on, but it was not as easy. It was all of a sudden like, oh, maybe Bob, oh, Bobby's got to work. Oh, he's taking off. Oh, you, know, you remember we used to do this every time after school? <clears throat> Some of that is gained back with friends at work. But over time, people will move. Less and less, there's there, no more people are going to stay in that spot than there is at that moment in time. That number only goes down after that. So it's already on, I wouldn't say terminal decline, but a downward decline. The second thing, third thing that comes in is people find a significant other. I don't say marriage because it doesn't take marriage. That doesn't, that doesn't require it. But you all had that guy. Best of buds, good of friends. And then he met a cute piece of tail and you never saw him until she dumped his ass. <clears throat> I'd like to say his name, but I can't. And he comes back. The prodigal son returns. The prodigal beta returns. Hey guys, what's going on? Where the hell have you been? 
Where were you for the past two years? We were calling you. We thought you were dead. Oh, you know, things didn't work out with me and Amy. Oh, oh, I see where we rank. I see. Okay. Cappy is good old AC isn't as good as enough little TNA, huh? All right, no, that's all right. We know. Okay, Brutus. <clears throat> but inevitably, they, they, especially guys, ooh, they get laid. Ooh. The hoo-ha. Well, that's certainly more, more important than lifelong friends, isn't it? And what's worse is I've, it's not even the lifelong friends. They just stay in. That's what, that's what, that's how many I lost it. It wasn't even that they were getting laid. It's that they, oh, I'm going to stay in and cuddle with my girlfriend. I'm like, well, yeah, do that. But don't you want to like go golf or well, I didn't golf back then. Do you want to, I don't know, go to, go to first Avenue or you want to go drive around and you want to go for a bike or do you want to do something? I mean, you got to get sick of her, right? Some, at some point in time, you're going to get sick of her and want to go do something else. She's going to want to get sick of you too. I'm sure women have the same problem on the other side of the sexual aisle. And, uh, but no, they stay in, they stay found that love marriage. So they find either a long-term relationship or they actually get married, <clears throat> which is the third or fourth stage of this decay where the spouse, usually the women, but not always, they don't have a monopoly on that. Where it's like, you're not going to go. I mean, oh, I don't like it. You guys all my pot know my pot rack hanging story. I'm not even going to. If you don't know it, look it up. Where I asked the guy, I'm like, hey, you want to get a beer? And then and then he asked his his then fiance. And you could just hear in the background. Me, 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 me. We got to hang a pot rack. What? And that's when I knew the friendship was over. Uh, and then you get married, you know, and then that, that, that significant other male does not want that person going out and having fun. Oh, no, no, no. That Aaron Clary is a bad influence. He'll take you out and he, he might have you get two beers and then you might go golfing. <clears throat> you might have a cigar. Oh, oh. Beauregard, fetch me my fainting couch. <clears throat> um, and then, then there's that. And then if you got kids, that actually makes sense. Oh, now you got kids, right? That's responsibility and obligation. The time can, if you do it right, you're sleep deprived. You, that's your child. You obviously should invest your time. But I know there's a guy named, let's just say his name rhymes with Bunkle Lappy. And he'd volunteer to be an uncle and watch over the kids, even though they're not genetically related. Because then it's like, hey, not my kid. Those, those, the best kids are those that aren't yours. And you say, hey, I got no responsibility over you. I don't have to, here's candy. Let's go have fun. I'm going to use you to pick up the girls. Many, many say, hey, I'll watch it. No. <clears throat> hey, you want to take the kid and we go fishing? We'll teach the kid how to fish. No, you want to, well, teach the kid how to swim. No, yeah. You're tired. Okay, I get it. Yeah. All right. Never mind. Yeah. <clears throat> Would have been fun. Would have been fun. Uh, so then once they get that's that's the death now. But, Every once in a while, there'll be research where they just need to get out. So then they're like, eh, 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 but it's a lead on. And then, oh, no. Uh, because then the the fifth bullet to enter your buddy's body is uh, age and, and defeatism, where they just get old. They didn't stay in shape. They got fat. <clears throat> and it's not even necessary that they got fat, though that doesn't help. Uh, they just got lethargic. Their mind is no longer uh, adventuresome or excited, and and they just want to stay in. I've seen, oh, and, and I'm sure you guys have seen that too. Like, hey, what's going on? Like, the kids are old enough to drive. <laughs> it's not like the kid is like twelve. Like, yeah, we can leave them alone for two hours, and maybe only the garage would be on fire. Like, hey, they're sixteen, and they want you. And say, like, hey, what are you doing? Watching TV. Isn't that the same movie you watched 10 times before? Yeah. You want to go have a conversation? You want to go uh, whatever? Do Go for a hike, get dinner? Do you want to do something? Bring the family along. You know, I like the kids. But come on, let's go. No, we're just going to kind of be more like family night. All right. <clears throat> then another little bit. This is, this is where it splits. This is... Uh, Wave 5B, if this hap 
the that person will get divorced and then they'll they'll want to come out a little bit but they realize they don't have the energy anymore um and they'll go out a little bit especially guys because they want to get the girl saw and especially nowadays they'll quickly learn like whoa this is a pain in the end no no and they'll go to their prawn um <clears throat> but the age gets them in the end the defeat is, and i will i will admit there is a, a lack of novelty after a bit like well do you really want to go whatever do you really want to go to another bar and hang out with your buddies you've done it a million times before it's nothing like that so um <clears throat> and then finally this is where it's 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 terminal and i i think i'm at that stage now certainly some of my my friends have gotten to this point <clears throat> their laziness overpowers their will to live and they they might they're they're officially now an NPC. They're no longer your friend. Oh, they'll be friendly towards you. They don't hate you. There's no animosity, but they have lost the will to live. Their desire to stay home and do what to be a homebody, to not leave the house, because they just don't have the energy to go out and do something. You know, mass was a body that stays without motion, remains without motion. The body with movement continues on. I'm the movement body. I'm I'm the I do, I go. Heck, today I lifted big rocks. Wanted to shore up some landscaping, so the stuff didn't erode any more than it has. Literally lifting rocks, because <laughs> because all all you Gen Zers and millennials have your degrees in the liberal arts and no muscles. So now old farts like me, almost fifty years old. We got to lift up the rocks because there ain't no kids to do it. Uh, but I'm active, you know, an active couple. I mean, this is, I don't have it on my notes, but maybe you look for active couples if such a thing exists. Uh, but uh, yeah, most for the most part, they want to, they're dead. They're, they are literally metaphorically dead, but they might as well be dead. They don't live life anymore. They want ease. They want comfort. They want uh, <clears throat> familiarity. That's why they'll watch the same show over and over again. Oh, it's a different show, Aaron. No, no. It's the same show. It really is just the same show of a family with the zany gay neighbor. And here comes uh, the the uh, token black family. And here's the Latino guy. And look, we rehashed the same plot points of all 1970s and 80s sitcoms, but with slightly more politically correct language. All right. It's, it's the same thing, man. It's growing pains, except uh, this time. Well, shoot, they're doing that to... Uh, <clears throat> The Wonder Years, they quite literally just the Black Wonder Years. Like, okay, uh, yeah. who are you going to watch it? No, no, I'm not going to watch it. Don't you want to go do something? No, they want to watch the Black Wonder Years. That's it. And that, that's the life cycle of your friends. <clears throat> now, as it pertains to you, we've had a couple new layers of code added to the operating system. And these are as far. First, you have the digital world, okay, with the smartphones, especially the smartphones and social media. All right. If you are younger, that that was such a monumental change to socializing that you almost have to be online now. And I would argue for you to go back online, but not to waste your time online. Okay, because most of the friends I have today are people I've met going all the way back to when blogging was a platform. This is before the social media. And <clears throat> distasteful as social media might be or the digital world or so, you know, YouTubes or whatever, it does cast a global net and you will find your true friends. And I hate to list these people because they're going to think this is a compliment. And it's not. It's just that I don't ain't got no real friends in the real world. I got all my weirdo digital friends like TJ Martinell, Jack Napier, um, Vince Malone, the masculine geek guys, Rurb. <clears throat> I like to think the rule zero guys are my friends. Rolo, uh, Fresh and Fit. Um, who else? You know, uh, oh, Troy Francis, uh, Rich Cooper, Ryan Stone. 
Sterling Cooper. And I've only met a handful. I literally just met Rolo and Sterling like within the past three months, four months, maybe. Donovan Sharp. <clears throat> and then, you know, Atham, Vlad Elkins, and Chad Elkins, Mr. Elkins. And this is why I know I caught a little bit of flack and, and it was, it was a, a legitimate critique. We said, well, well, how would you date Aaron? I'd say what I would do is I'd go online again, set an online dating profile, be very clear with what I want, set it nationwide. And if I found a girl that met my rather clear and pointed dating profile requirements, I'd fly out to go on a date with her. Flying out to go on a date. I, I understand. I get it. <clears throat> but it's the same thing with with friends. Although the good news is with friends, predominantly in the male field, they ain't gonna they ain't gonna flake on you unless your name is Rolo Tomasi. Then they'll flake on you three times. Then you'll finally get to meet him once. <laughs> uh and that's what I that's been my social life, I'd say almost the past 10 years. Well, maybe not 10, but certainly five. Where I go and I fly out. And I make friends that I've met through the internet <clears throat> in whatever capacity, and I've developed good friendships that way. And thank God I have, because like that's the only darn reason to live right about now. Even Jack Napier. But, but what's great about Jack, he's all the way in Europe, so you don't have to really actually see the guy. Yeah. <laughs> Same reason I always had, like the ideal world, I always had the ideal, like the ideal dating scenario. Like the ideal girlfriend would live an hour away, have her own place in her own career so that you'd have a plausible reason to not see her if you didn't want to. <laughs> Jackson said, ah, yeah, I can't make you in Europe, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't want to see him anyway. Um, But that I, I know you don't want, but that's where you, especially if you're younger, that's where your generation is. And I'm not saying you have to go online. You don't have to friend everybody. Absolutely not. Keep your, your social media very lean. Only follow people on Twitter. You absolutely enjoy the company of digitally speaking. <clears throat> Only, uh, uh, you know, like, and, and join online communities where you talk online, do a podcast with one another or get into the chat. I mean, we got practically a fan. Like, yeah, I want to meet Juan Corbera. I want to meet Alex Patino. I want to meet uh, who else? You know, the, the regular Han Yockers that insult me all the time. I've got a bunch of people in Australia that if I ever were to go to Australia, I'd want to meet them. <clears throat> um, you know, the day will come. The day will come. But that's how you're going to find like-minded people. That's how you're going to find your friends. The problem is in this new digital world, you're going to have to drive out to find them. Another thing complicating it, though, there's not much you can do about it, is this root beer float uh, uh What's the word I'm looking for? Not, not, uh, hysteria. So what I'm going to call it hysteria. Not saying it's not, but it's, it's an overreaction where, yeah, your social life is crippled and it's not much. I can't give you any advice. You just got to wait until saner heads get in and say, all right, all right, look, <clears throat> if you're predisposed to the root beer float disease, you go squirrel away. I can't use these words. You go put on a face diaper you you do whatever it is that you need to keep yourself. In the meantime, everybody like, yeah, go work. Go produce things again. Get the shelves back stocked up because we need you. Oh, that's right. You're all liberal arts majors. You can't produce anything. All right. Um, how about this? Stock the shelves with uh, diversity and inclusion lectures and, and sanctimonious admonishings of, of discrimination and privilege. That'll that'll increase everyone's standards of living. <clears throat> But that you just have to wait and abide by. But somewhat related to the root beer floats, and this is another handicap, politics. In, in the olden days, both the Democrats and the Republicans were pro-America and pro-work. Okay, Now, the only party remaining, I hate to make it sound so simple, the Republicans are largely the party of work. They're the party of labor. The Democrats are now the party of trust funders and parasites. And not only is it simply the, the, the nature of economics of the two political parties and what they're advocating now, worse for you, especially as a young uh, individual, is predominantly for the left. Though I'll admit, I don't deal with leftists. I just kick them all out of my life. I, don't care. I, I just don't deal with parasites. Um, <clears throat> especially if you're looking to date for a guy 
most younger gals are going to lean politically. And it's not even that they're that, that they're a D, small D or big D or whatever. It's that it's their religion. Like this is, and you are evil incarnate if you're not with them. Like you even say, well, I'm a libertarian. Does that count? Nope. You're, you're all, you're going to burn in hell, burn. <clears throat> and so that has uh, divided not just the country, but especially young people where you can't even say, how many times have you had a friend like, yeah, I was hanging, I, I had a, who was I talking to? He was going to go, oh, I know, I know who it was now. He was going to go on a, uh, a, a fantasy sports ball team. You know, we're, we're men who have no athletic ability want to get together and <laughs> just waste time. Just waste time. And uh, he didn't have the, the thing or the root beer float. And not only was he not allowed, but I can't believe it. You're so stupid. It's like, wasn't this your friend? Didn't you find him somewhat intellectually your equal? Wouldn't you more ask, well, why is that? I'm kind of curious. <clears throat> I do, like, for example, I don't care if you get the root beer float or not. If you get him, like, oh, you have every right. I'm sure you have your reasons. And oh, okay, out of curiosity, why do you have never once? I'm like, ah, well, you want to wear a mask? Go ahead. I'm not my problem. Um, but that that cannot be said generally speaking. Uh, of the left. And there's some some zealots on the right too, I guess. Uh, but you're looking, well, what is, how do young people vote? Let's see what percentage is, is going to be leftist. Let's just use the presidential election. election. Uh, do <laughs> it's um they broke it down i just wanted to know a number truthfully guys i don't need your research at tufts university genuine voted okay so two-thirds gen z two-thirds uh voted for free stuff money printer go burr higher rents they didn't think they were voting for higher rents and no tires. They were thinking, free, free, give me that, stimmy checks. What are you going to spend your stimmy check on if there ain't anything to buy? Uh, I don't know. Milk comes from the grocery store. I have a degree in sociology with honors. Um, But for younger people, especially like, yeah, if you're not a leftist, your social life is going to take an incredible hit. But once again, I would argue, go online <clears throat> and only associate with people that not I'm not saying oh you gotta be this you gotta be if you find a cool democrat guy go hang out with a cool democrat guy or gal I admit some of them just care you know they think they're doing good they just actually care about their fellow human being they're naive about it I don't know how much more socialism you need to realize hey it doesn't work <clears throat> let's stop it now Um, but uh, sadly I'd, I'd like to know out of that 65% of Gen Zers that vote left, what percentage of the, of them is politics, like their, their religion, like it's what gives them value. And so that's a, that's another hurdle you get to face. Um, <clears throat> here's another one, not just about how to get the girls, but, um, I'm going to read an article I wrote, um, cause Joker read it, but he did a play by play. So it was, Interrupted, not who's providing to the conversation. I'm just going to read it so you have an audio file of it. Um, I pose the question, do women even like men? And I'm not trying to be edgy. It was like, okay, kind of look at it in a different way. And statistically and historically, where have women come from? They've always been somehow dependent on men. You could see where a built up uh, res resentment, resilience, reluctance, apprehension to men. It's just trying a different line of thought, trying to kind of view it from women's viewpoint. <clears throat> um, that the women, but now more recently, and I, I made the argument either it, genetics history or more recently because they've condi been conditioned to, they've been weaponized against men, um, or combination of both women ain't all that interested in you guys. And combined with that, 
because it's not only women here. I, I want to show you the point I'm trying to make. Both men and women have gotten physically revolting for each other. Men are not good. Men are just as obese as women and they're soy. Girls are all fat and ugly. <clears throat> and there's no incentive to go and commingle or pursue after the, the opposite sex. Now, what that does to you in terms of your social life, I'm not talking dating life, I'm talking social life, is nearly all socializing existed because men were trying to get girls. I'll give you a perfect example, ballroom dancing, okay? Ballroom dancing was hot in the 90s and the aughts, even going into like the, the early 2010s. And the reason why, because guys were trying to get the girls. They would go dance. Why? Because they want to get the girls. Here's a, and it's a great way to meet girls as long as everyone's showing up. <clears throat> and what ended up happening is some guys got the girls. Some people just got sick of dancing. Some people moved on to a different type of dance. But inevitably, the scene ended. Largely in part because people got old and they started pairing off and the party was over. But if you never had girls there, and this is in business model. That's why you have ladies night. You don't have guys night. But you don't even have bars no more. <clears throat> but in the before time, when you would go out and socialize, the whole point was to meet girls. That was the whole point. And business uh, uh, bar owners and nightclub people knew this wasn't exactly. You didn't have to go to the Carlson School of Management to figure that out. And if you did go to the Carlson School of Management, they wouldn't teach you that because that would be too risque. And so you would have. Uh, ladies night, girls get in free, discounted drinks, and that's what it was. Well, you take away girls, there ain't no reason to go out. And I saw that like once, once I got, I won't lie, once I have a girlfriend, why don't we go dancing? And I'm like, yeah, kind of got a girl now. And the only reason I go dance, like right now, oh, I don't want to dance with this girl. Like, if she was really good, like I saw a lady, and this did actually happen one time. There's an older gal, like, I mean, grandma age. I saw, this is in Wyoming, it's quite some time ago. She knew how to dance. And I ended up, why well, one other older gal has to dance. Her husband wouldn't let me dance with her. And like, okay, that's that. But there's other, other gal did. We danced. She blew it. Great. It's like driving a fancy car, right? You get a gal that knows how to dance. Like, oh, she knows how to tandem Charleston. I'm going to take her out for it. It's fun. You're like, okay, I still got it. You know, all right. <clears throat> but I don't want to go spend three hours a night dancing. The only reason guys spend three hours a night dancing is because of all those girls they dance with, they drastically increase their chances of getting laid. That's it. Sorry. It's the truth. <clears throat> but in the process of that pursuit, as you guys all went out to house parties, nightclubs, dancing, this, that, whatever you're socializing, your meetup groups, it was, you know, it was to get the girls. But in that process, you form friendships and you talk to guys as well. And you made female friends. You made male friends. And you had a, so, so it was still there. But man, once people start pairing off, or you yourself start, but you don't go, you don't want to go out to that nightclub. You don't want to go to a bar. That's when I when I switched from going to a bar to like have fun and meet girls to <clears throat> go to a bar to get drunk and then walk home. <laughs> it wasn't to get the girl. Uh, oh, I'd have to get up and talk to her. Uh, oh. Oh, I'd have to come up with something witty to say. Oh, F, oof. Hey, give me another drink. I'll have another rumple mitts, please. Thank you. Ah, rumpy. That's, a, ah, that's much easier. All right. <clears throat> um, so that's another huge thing, especially with the disease going around. Um, and I would say uh, social media has formed this environment where you just don't go out in person at all. I mean, are there nightclubs anymore? Are there even like, do you, do people even go out and dance on a dance? I don't mean ballroom dancing, like boom, chicka, boom dancing. I mean, D aside from brew pubs where like, I don't know how long you guys are going to keep these beards up, man. Like aren't rats starting to grow in them? Like, is, 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 are you done with the brew pub? Huh? <clears throat> you done with like the, the log seat that was cut the long way. Look, man, it's all like, like nature and, and homey. You know, has anyone gotten a number at a brew pub? Does that work? Do people even ask people for numbers anymore? I just get the social media now. Um, but women's general, either genetic, that has now been allowed to uh, publicize itself, 
general disinterest in men or their conditioning that you're the enemy and patriarchy and big is beautiful and or co combination and you guys not being all that attractive girls have no interest to go out and they're certainly not pretty enough to have you guys ask them out so there is not going to be a nightlife there is no nightlife <clears throat> and that's why i put the the image up is because i remember as a little boy like in the backseat of the car looking up seeing all these cigarette billboard advertisements and drinking advertisements in the 70s and the early 80s where everyone in the 20s and 30s were having fun smoking cigarettes and drinking whatever <clears throat> i think canadian windsor i remember there was one billboard in in milwaukee always saw it um I thought, oh yeah, that that's what adults do. Well, yeah, they do that for a while, and then they get married, then they get divorced, and then then they just stay at home. Heck, your generation never got to that point where they're smoking Winston's or Salem's and driving a boat and having a good time. Um, so that 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 the death of the nightlife is gone, and then uh, let's also consider that financial mistakes young people have made. That will haunt them well into their 40s, namely student loan debts. And in your case, boys, getting cars you can't afford. I got a car loan, which is almost just as bad as your student loans. Um, that You need money to go out and people need to work. Now, a lot of people say, well, no, I got the stimmy checks I live at. Well, yeah, but these are the types that are the needs, the basement dwellers. They don't go out. They don't go out. And they don't want to go hang out with you. <clears throat> they play with their friends online on video games. That's their socializing. And uh, a lot of that is that they can't afford rent or choose not. You can afford whatever you want. Well, not whatever you want, but you, you could afford a one bedroom or a room if you get a job. Most people don't want a job. They're they've already got that terminal point where their laziness is stronger than their desire to live. So they're already terminal. They're already NPCs at 22, 23. So that's the financial stuff that debt is holding him back. All right. So the solution, same solution. All right. Lower your expectations. Understand this natural process. Understand how this natural process is even worsened by the digital world, root beer floats, politics, both men and women being physically unappealing to the other and nobody going out and debt that is, that is loaded up on young people today. All right. So that, oh, I would also probably throw into that higher cost of living because everyone just voted for free money, which I don't know if you knew this, there's no such thing as free money. You just inflated the housing market and increased your rents and healthcare costs and car costs. Yay. You sure, you sure pulled one over on the rich people. <clears throat> um, so you'll lower your expectations. All right. Second, find hobbies that you enjoy, but where there are other people around. This may not be possible until the root beer float craze goes away. All right. But you are going to have to find hobbies. And finally, it is a not a full time job, but it is definitely a part time job. It's work. You have to get out there. You got to go out. One of the reasons, I mean, this goes way back. One of the reasons I was kind of I don't want to say a lightning rod or the center of the party, but I was the catalyst. Okay. That's a better way. I was the catalyst for a lot of people to go out and be social. Cause I remember going way back to like when I was 20, cause I was too young to go in. There's a place called Mancini. Like that looks kind of cool. And it's this lounge supper club in, in St. Paul called Mancini's. I was biking past it cause I didn't have a car. Oh well, no, I did have a car then. I just, I just enjoyed biking. I'm like, oh, I like to check out that place. So I would go to these places that were normally reserved for older people, like my age. Uh, and I poke my head in there. Oh, there's a dance floor and this and that. And then teaching dance class and you go field trips. Da, 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 da. And I said, let's go to this place. Let's try this place. Uh, and what ended up happening is, even though I wasn't Mr. Popularity back in school, I was like the conduit to other places. Like, I explored and found these places. In other words, I hoofed it. I went out and explored. I was Daniel Boone. I went out into the wilderness and found some pretty cool places to go. And when you're somewhat traveled and you say, hey, let's try this place. So a lot of this, it's kind of like doing reconnaissance. On where you want to live. You got to go out there and make a fair amount of money. Not a lot, but, but more than I thought that I would um, 
because of all the traveling I did in the United States. People are like, well, where do you go here? What do you recommend for national parks? What do you recommend a hike? What do you recommend for a motorcycle ride? Well, I went out there. Now I know I did the exploration for other people. Now I can convey that. And so if you do that, you get out there, you find out, oh, there's like this really cool pottery class. Or, oh, there's this old time Asian dude. He's an immigrant from China. He set up a restaurant and he's teaching everyone how to cook Chinese food. Or <clears throat> my case, it was the ballroom dancing. Whatever it is, get out there and go do it and find these places and venues so that when you, one, hopefully there are some other cool people, regardless of age, at these venues and places. And two, if you go to other places like, hey, we should all go check out this place. It's, it's really neat. It's this old uh, <clears throat> German lederhose in Oktoberfest place. And they got Oompa Oompa music all the time. And they serve sauerkraut and brats for cheap. Let's go give it a shot. And then all some people kind of, they follow you. You lead and I won't lie. And sometimes that will help you with the ladies as well. Because you're kind of like the master of ceremonies. So that's it. <clears throat> but yeah, man, it's going to take work. And you're going to have to wait for the environment to change. You're going to have to, and you're going to have to work with what you got. Um, You know, it. It may not be the worst thing to work another job just because, look, I'd say go out and try your best but and, and really try your best. OK, don't half ass it. Try your best. G good. Give it a good, honest effort. And if you don't see improvements in, like, say, six months. Then maybe you got to go do something else like work because there's an opportunity cost. If you're spending that much time, you're like you could be showing up your finances so that when that wave of divorce guys comes along, when you're 30 or 35 or 40, you got the money like, yeah, I got a boat or well, don't buy a boat, but uh, let's rent a boat. Or, oh yeah. I got, I got a bar downstairs. Yeah. You want to come over? Yeah. Chill out. Watch the game on my LCD projector screen. Though those have gotten tremendous, uh, tremendously cheaper now than since I had to use them the last time. But yeah, it's, that's it. And then what you're going to find is a lot of guys that do global travel because at least maybe you're going to constantly be searching for your group, for your people, for your village, for your community. And, um, you know, if, <clears throat> you need to have money to do that. But if you got the money, you got the time, go do it now. Go do it now. And maybe you'll find a, a country, you know, a lot of people are saying good things about Mexico. Minus the whole cartels and crime. But the, the go, go try, find, because if this environment isn't cutting it for you, which I can completely understand, like, because I get sick and tired of looking at fat people all the time, especially in Walmart. Maybe you want to go where, forget just because, they forget hot chicks, just maybe you, you want to see people who dress up nice occasionally and don't look disgusting and revolting. And maybe, maybe you won't become best friends, but at least it's like, ah, it's like a jazz club. You're not, you don't talk at a jazz club. You just sit and listen to the music, but the ambiance accounts for a lot of it too. <clears throat> Where you're sitting and just like, oh yeah, I'll have this drink, I'll have that food, or wow, well, my time, like I'll have the drink, I can't afford the food. Um, but yeah, oh, I like I like listening to the mood. I'm particularly thinking of the artist quarter. I don't even know that's open, or if they burned it to the ground or what. All right, let's go through the super chats here. If we have any of which we have a couple. Uh Rolla was on fire last night. Yeah, I'm in the middle of uh, his show right now. Uh, super Penguin, 54 95 two bucks. You want to meet a Super Penguin? Deep down, you know. What's a Super Penguin? I just keep it thinking uh, Penguins of Madagascar. <laughs> Hang on. scrolling i want to also make sure we ain't got any idiots all right 30 seconds out two bucks been a lot of cool fit people salsa dancing yeah yeah you'll find some generally fit people although it happened in salsa down this is over 10 years ago but everyone got fat fat and old is when it up happened. i'm like you know i'm out <laughs> and for that reason i'm out uh Maxi Mike, 10 bucks. Just as socialism destroys itself from the inside by misallocation of resources, i.e. their desirability, Volman will extinguish what men say. Well, they will. They already largely have. 
And I, I don't mean to be, it's not like woman, am I right? And I'm like, no, really what younger people I'm focusing on uh, be intellectually honest. Some of the Gen X gals did keep themselves in shape and they'd try. What, what is going to get a guy to go to war right now? I mean, don't, don't let me tell you, look, look at what the actions are. Guys are dropping out. You're not going to, there's no pretty girls. You told them, you literally told them you didn't need them. And, uh, Oh, you, you've given them huge disadvantages to finding employment, preferential treatment to women. That's law. <clears throat> you blame them for institutional sexism or discriminatory patriarchy. And uh, in, most girls are not uh, interested in marriage and, and dating and, and children. Just, you know, look at the polling data. I'll read the thing later. Um, yeah, they, they more or less have removed. Okay. They've stopped being feminine. But only if you knew this, opposites attract masculine like the feminine. Uh, hence, no longer attracting men to chase and build. Thanks, gals. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I can't find tires. Can't find tires. I need tires. Can't find tires. But by gosh, I could go to the university and get lectured about being white. <laughs> and that'll improve GDP. Uh, Maxi Mike, two bucks big. I mean, minimalism is beautiful <laughs> winning. <clears throat> uh, yes, Eric, I'm going to come visit you down in Dallas. Remind me taking off on the 21st. Oh, Eric. Wow. You didn't have to donate 20 bucks, dear. All right. Eric, Shanta Williams, please look her up. Erica's classy climb. <clears throat> uh, speaking of women who got their act together and hustling and entrepreneurs, there you guys go. Take a page or two from her book. 20 bucks going to Playa del Carmen for a month next year. Then Croatia. Hey, tell me what Croatia is like, Erica. Let me know. Italy and Greece. Lots of walking, fresh food in different environment. Got to get out of the house and mingle. Happy hours at steakhouses in Austin are interesting. Ah. No, I've, I've been to one too many hipster towns. I don't. I don't need to go to another one. I don't need to go to one where they just add cowboy hats. That's, uh, um, <clears throat> I bet you it's going to be nice that you'll be on the Adriatic and the Mediterranean. That'd be very nice. Uh, Joe Allen, nine Oh four, two bucks. Crappy cap. Yes. Yes. You look even grumpier than I do. Is that it? Are we up now? We caught up. I think we're caught up. Boy, if there was only a Poke Bowl place to 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 go buy my buy with super chats, I did buy. I'll tell you this. Oh, buy by, by the way, I'm gonna delve into this a little bit more later on. But BunkerBasics.com with Bunker Bob says I bought the house and okay, I gotta stock up on some things. I found the coolest. Here's here's your number one problem with solar panels, right? You don't have the electrical engineering ability to wire it to your house, right? Okay, so what I ended up doing was getting like this camping solar array through BunkerBasics.com. Just search uh, solar panels, BunkerBasics.com. And uh, there's like this solar array. And the wire comes out of it, and you could charge USB stuff with it. So you could charge up a USB battery. And then I went online, and there's more and more appliances, not big appliances like refrigerators, obviously, <clears throat> but simple lights that are run off of USB power. And so now I've bypassed the entire, because that was my main thing with solar power. Like if you really wanted solar power to get out there, why do you make it that it's as easy as you plug it in? Like, okay, you build a new house or you add this little thing onto the house. Like, okay, here, you plug your solar power panels into here. All right, turn off the electricity, plug it in, turn it back on. Put your solar panels outside, run this wire, plug it in here. Oh, no, no. I need to pay some guy 12 grand to install it for me. I'm like, you really want to take off? Make it so the average everyday person can do it themselves. No, can't do that. Just can't do that. So this is kind of like that easy. Like, okay, I need lights. That's basically what I was. I don't want to be running on candles. And so the solar power thing will charge up. So I'm on the lookout for everything that's USB powered now. <clears throat> so there we go. All right. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. See you guys later, Toodles.